All right, we're back for day two. Let's get this car ready for the 2021 Targa California. Okay guys, it's the morning of day two. We are ready to finish this bad boy off. Well, at least get the alternator and the second condenser in. I had a great chat with Johnny from Classic Retrofit yesterday. And by the way, I sort of assume you guys know who that is, but Johnny is the founder of Classic Retrofit. And he and I met probably four or five years ago at a Pelican gathering here in Long Beach. And I told him about my upcoming YouTube channel and what I wanted to do. And he said, well, let me send you one of our units. And it was one of the first that he ever built. I mean, this is a guy that was working out of his garage and, uh, and now he's got millions of dollars in sales and he's working with you know, Gunther Works and Singer and a few other manufacturers that I can't even tell you, but he told me last night. I got on the phone with him last night and he answered uh, a bunch of questions that I had about what I was doing. First and foremost, I was worried that I had the wrong alternator. And that is because on my alternator, let me grab it, on my alternator, it has this shaft and a fan going in the back. This one don't have that. This one is totally empty in the back and I thought, crap, I'm gonna need that. It turns out I don't. It turns out I don't need it at all. This alternator, because it's very new and very high tech, has a metal fan built into the chassis, whereas the OEM fan from 1995 does not. So this is the correct one. The other questions I had are, what do I do with this big giant red wire? What do I do with the black wire? And what you do is you actually run this red wire in addition to the wire that is already there from the factory. So basically we're doubling up the wire uh, from the alternator to the starter. And then you're going to put on the B minus, they included a nice big black cable and you ground that right to the engine. Got that all sorted, figured that thing out. Next, the air conditioning condensers have two different fittings. There's a big and a small, and I was worried that I only got small hose and I didn't have the right kind of fittings. But what he told me is there's actually a, uh, an install guide for if you install this classic retrofit into a 993 or 996 that dual condensers is the default. So they do it in series, just like I'm doing. And what they do is you put, you've got one big one and then three small ones. So the inner part here is exactly the same no matter what hose. So what you do is you go out, you go uh, into the first condenser, out of the first condenser, into the second condenser, out of the second condenser, back to the front of the car and you go basically big, small, small, small. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plumb this thing up the way he suggested. Finally, I grabbed a couple of condensers uh, a few months ago from a Porsche Boxster, which are the same exact condensers the one we're using. But I realized yesterday that the way that this one has the fittings, which is actually they're both on one side and they're both very organized right here, is gonna work better for me on my uh, car than the one he supplied, which has one like on one end and coming out the other end. So I'm gonna actually try to use this one. This fitting just fits inside here like this. You fit it in flush and then it's got like a, a bolt on. You see that? It's got like a bolt on that you put a, a bolt through. So I'm gonna put both in and out right here, which is gonna tuck it up right at the top of the wheel well. This is gonna work so much better for me from a fitment standpoint. Now the hope is, can I get the fan that he gave us uh, to fit on this one? I think it's the same exact size. So my hope is that it should be no problem. Uh, I've got tape here to protect it, obviously. Finally, I have one more thing to address before I get started, and that is in the comments, you guys were saying, well, like, it better work for $6,000, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's $6,000. And I will tell you unequivocally, there's been nothing I've done to this car uh, I've been doing these cars now for 18 years. 2003 was the first, uh, I got a 72 911 in 2003. It was the first time I'd worked on something like this. I've driven now cross country a couple of times. I've driven on seven Targa events, which are basically 1200 mile 
you know, you're doing 300 miles a day at like hardcore, like you're doing twisty, hardcore driving for six hours a day for four days. And I've never done an upgrade that is better than this air conditioning. And I'm not just BSing, like it is a, an absolute game changer. When you think about the market of vintage Porsches in general, you can't go wrong. Like you can't, uh, you can't invest enough in this car to not get your money back. You will always get your money back. If you're going to keep this car forever, don't even worry about it. Just divide that $6,000 into multiple years. Uh, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get Johnny on the blower a little bit later in this video. And I can ask him about, you know, what people say after they've done this but unequivocally it is the best thing i've done uh it's like buying a rolex uh you know it's like you can't you can't lose money on it like you're not losing money on this car at all you will absolutely get every dime you put into this it is so far uh above market value right now speaking of rolex if you happen to have a submariner or an omega speedmaster i sold my sub a couple years ago because i needed some money um and you don't use it if you're not much of a watch guy I really love it. I like to be able to whack it on a door jam and it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm not trying to invest, I'm just trying to own. So if you have one and you're not that into it and you wanna get rid of it, uh, wrench me at gmail.com. R-E-N-N-C-H-M-E at gmail.com. Drop me a line and maybe we can work something out. Anyway, let's get back into this thing. I wanna finish these two major projects and then move on to the rest of this whole thing. So the alternator company changed the uh, fitting on the alternator from an M6 to an M8. So you've got to drill out this cable so that these are both M8s and you can fit the right size uh, bolt on it on each end. Cause it's got to fit on the starter and it's got to fit on the, the big lug on this alternator. So now I'm going to run this thing, hopefully through the grommet, through the car and then bolt it onto the starter. What's up, Ben? So what this is doing is creating some redundancy so that there's no issue getting juice to that alternator. So as promised, I have a special guest, which is the one and only Johnny from Classic Retrofit, who's calling in from somewhere in the UK, right? South Coast, yeah. South, South Coast. It's sunny. it's sunny here at the moment, it's 8 o'clock in the evening, but it's uh, sunny and warm and uh, yeah, it's good. Which is, which is not normally the case when you're uh, in, in London. In fact, you have, here in the States, you have, I'm sort of the West Coast guy, and then you have an East Coast guy that's in Florida that has been really actually one of the proponents of adding this second condenser. Um, but what I was telling you about before, um, by the way, if you guys have any questions about this whole kit, Johnny is the guy. He will, he, he's really just... You know, he's sort of a one-man shop with a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, smaller employees, if you will. But like, you're the mastermind behind this whole thing. When you and I started working together, it was, I mean, it was just you, and you were kind of in a, a shed and doing your thing. And you said, yeah. "Give this thing a go." And I did these, you know, these five um, that five-part video series. Uh, I want to basically respond to some of the people in the comments that are like, well, it's so expensive, it's $6,000. I've already told them what, what I thought about it. I'm curious about like what you hear from people that have installed this system uh, in terms of like what their experience is of, of owning this car now, and maybe you could talk about why you started it in the first place. Yeah, sure. So obviously we all love the cars, you know, and um, we've all been through the thing where we get the car and we strip it back and we paint and we, we do all the suspension and the engine and we get the thing back together. And then, you know, we all want to impress the other half, don't we? So we, we say, hey, honey, look, I've finished the car. Do you want to come out for a ride? And of course, the first time she gets in it and it's hot, it's kind of like, I'm never going in that car again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, right. So this is this is my my story, and uh, I wanted to, I wanted to fix that. And um, so because of your girlfriend you know, or your wife, or whatever you had at the my, time. Yeah, my, uh, my, my long term partner. Yeah. Thirty years, but yeah, but so, thirty. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something to be said about arriving at your destination, not you know, with a sweaty back or something. It's like 
It's almost like you can't go to a, a nice event. Let's say you have a black tie event to go to. You can't take this car because you end up all sweaty and you don't want to arrive at your event all sweaty. And that's to me one of the coolest things as well as being able to have a conversation with someone while you're driving, which I'd never, it was a profound thing. And I was like, wow, I can actually talk to my passenger while we're on yeah, the highway, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, so we, we just had a guy come back, uh, interestingly, because I, I did not say this to him, but he came back on Instagram last week and he said, you know what, the car feels bigger inside. Mm. And do you know what, that's, that's the first thing I noticed. It's like, usually if you shut the windows in these cars, it feels so small and cramped and claustrophobic. And so you have to have them open. And if you're, if you're, on the, if you're, if you're at speed, if you're on the motorway, you... you you simply can't have a conversation, you know, that's the other thing. So being able to shut the windows and be cool and speak to somebody, you know, it's a nice it's a nice alternative to the usual yeah. hammering along with the window open and the buffet and yeah. you know, that's okay if you're hooting around with your, your boys, but if you want the the role of a a more kind of you know as a more chauffeuring vehicle to your lady then <laughs> right right <laughs> you want to just take a cruise you know the other part of that is like those people that are like oh you know i don't need a radio i just there's the the music behind my ears i go that's fine but then try doing 1200 miles and see how that feels without having anything well, in your car you know well the thing the thing is you know the thing about me is i actually use my sc so i've done fifty thousand miles in the SC since I restored right. it so that's kind of getting on for six seven years ago now and I take it anyone who knows me I take that thing anywhere and yeah. everywhere and anywhere if I can use it I will use it and I don't care what the weather is but I never have to make that decision of like thinking oh it's too hot to take the Porsche anymore you know right and that's the thing it fixes because you know I actually enjoy taking it out when it's hot you know and um yeah, I mean, it's just it's just completely changed the whole experience. You know? That's what I said. It, it is an absolute game changer. So uh, for anybody who wants any more information, when you uh, reach out to Classic Retrofit, Johnny's the guy that will respond. He's the guy that responds to all this stuff. There's a huge thread on Pelican Parts about the Classic Retrofit air conditioning system. So check that out on the forums. And of course, you can always comment on this video in the comments and anything you say, if I don't know the answer, I will relay it back to Johnny and get it back to you. But uh, classicretrofit.co.uk or .com, right? .com. 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 Yeah. Uh, info at or Johnny yeah. at, you know, that'll get, yeah. get to me. So, cool, man. Um, well, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for hanging with us for a sec. Um, and hopefully you guys have, if you have any questions, reach out to him. Yeah, look at this pretty SC back there. Yeah, let's let see. You. There it is. Yeah, so that's the beastie. <laughs> yeah, it's so. perfect. All right, man, thanks so much for hanging with us, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right, take it easy. Yeah. Bye. All right, well, that was cool. Uh, anyway, any questions you guys have, either for me or for Johnny, uh, about this? Everyone who says adding a second condenser is the game changer. So if you're gonna do one of these installs from uh, default, just get two. It's just as easy to run two, I mean almost, uh, as it is to run one. So do that and then you will be so psyched about how this thing goes. All right, we got this line run from underneath. I've got it run back there, it's zip tied to the back here, nice and secure. And I've got this guy going right to the engine block as prescribed. So basically these guys double up on that one post. This guy goes on the other and then uh, along with this, this ground. And then this guy is the lamp. And that gives you that like alternator light is on situation. I've got this thing all nicely painted, finished up. I'm gonna mount this in here, bolt it together, bolt it in the car, move on. So Johnny mentioned something about this particular uh, shroud having a hard time when you tighten it down, the, the ears, which are these four ears, can kind of collapse on you. So I put some washers in there just to try to spread the load a little bit. And I also used some uh, nuts that have that internal O-ring so they don't back out. And now I think we're ready to 
go. The other thing that's kind of cool about this install is you can get rid of this cone on the back. Apparently you don't need it because it's part of this fan assembly, which you also don't need on this modern alternator. So that's cool. Makes it a little easier to install. Got three brand new zinc bolts. Thanks to you guys. Okay, I'm doing a little test fit here. I have the car back on its wheels. All three lug nuts. Here's my fitment. I got plenty of clearance. I'm almost fully compressed. So I don't think this is gonna be an issue. I had to make a little bracket here to adapt. And I think I'm ready to unbolt this thing and get the hoses all plumbed up and then button this whole rear end up. Finalizing my hose routing here. By the way, I was wrong about the temperature of Death Valley. I said it was 118. It's actually 124 degrees today. So, air conditioning. These clamps take a special kind of pliers that you basically take that centerpiece and you smush it between like that. And you clamp it and then it clamps on the hose. You do it in two spots. You can see that the hook up here is boom and boom. And that's what gives you this airtight seal. All right, let me clamp the rest of these up and I will see you in a sec. All right, guys, here we are. I think we are all set. So we've got condenser one. We've got input going out here, going out from condenser one, up and around, into condenser two on the top, weaving all around, all around, all around, out of condenser two, back through, and then back to the front of the car. Condenser mounting. Solid as a rock. I mean, legit not going anywhere. Now, will I protect this with a screen? Yes, I will. Will I do it for this trip? I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time. I need to make sure I take care of all the mission critical stuff before I do anything else. The only bummer about this whole situation is that I won't know if this thing works until we try to fire it up and put Freon in it. So, or R32 or whatever the hell it is, R12 but everything is just zip tied down. It's super firm. Everything's, you know, really solid. So I feel really good about the install. I think it looks great. Okay, as of now, condenser install is fully done. Alternator install is fully done. Those are the two huge things on the list. Now it's a bit gravy. I've got a few things to do up front. I've got to change some grounding cables that Johnny recommended. I've also got to run a new hose to the new vent that I bought. And if all of that works, then I can actually get to some of the fun stuff I wanted to get to before the end of this video. But the important part is tomorrow morning, I'll be able to take the car to the place, uh, the air conditioning place and charge it. And if there's any issues, we'll have the issues in the morning and hopefully be able to solve them by the time we have to leave. Now, because this circuit is doing two fans instead of one, and those things are pretty bomber, I need to beef up the grounds that are part of the relay on that circuit. All right, successful beefy ground cable. Nice loop, nice plug. Let's go plug it in. So I don't know why I put this ground bolt all the way down here. It is such a pain in the ass to get to. I didn't have to. I could have grounded this stuff anywhere when I originally installed it. But I grounded it to the bottom of the smuggler's box. Like a dolt. So basically what I've done is I've eliminated this plug. Because I didn't have the right kind of fittings that would go on this kind of larger gauge wire and still fit in this plug. So I went plugless. So we're gonna run this thing basically uh, where it was. It's gonna go right there. 
It's going to go right there. And these are going to be out. These will go directly to the ground all the way down there that you can't see right now. Again, why I did this originally, anybody's guess. No idea why I did that to myself. Okay, I saved myself a huge amount of heartache by putting the ground system right here instead of all the way on the bottom, which is where I had it before, which was an absolute and utter nightmare. And now, I mean, you can see how many grounds there are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different wires that have to go onto this one lug. And that's why it was such a pain in the ass. But it's good now. Uh, it's pretty tight. Everything is good. I've got my big beefy ground wires going to that relay. And now that should be handled. So technically that is it from the hardware standpoint. Now I have to work on the vents so I can go inside the car and work on my center vent. And I'm hoping that's gonna be easy. And then work on the two under vents. Uh, I've got one more thing to do that Johnny from Classic Retrofit recommended. So I'm gonna do that as well. And that is blocking the air vent uh, right here. And we're gonna go through Death Valley. Like I said, it's gonna be 125 degrees. So he said, bag the fresh air because you're gonna get hot, hot, hot fresh air. So I've just installed a new center vent on the inside. And now I get to install these bad boys, which are, these are so new that I don't think anybody has them, to be honest. I may be the first person that has these. These are 3D printed classic retrofit vents. They go underneath the, um, I don't know, is it the cowl? I guess the cowl is in the front. They go underneath where the dashboard would be, sort of above in the footwell. And they allow you to redirect the air uh, to uh, wherever you want, like in your feet and, and uh, adjust everything. So it's super cool. I'm really excited about these. I'm gonna get these to pop in and see how they go. And then I'll get the light on and show you guys exactly what it looks like. Okay. One down. Well, that was an epic two days of upgrading the classic retrofit electro cooler. Let's go over what we did. Number one, we added a second condenser to the system, which I'm told is an absolute game changer. Next, I added a 175 amp alternator on the Porsche 993 engine, uh, including all the modern amenities that the classic retrofit alternator has. I then upgraded the grounds from the compressor to the chassis. Then I upgraded my center vent. So now it rotates 360 degrees and goes in each direction, which is a huge upgrade for me. Finally, I added the brand new 3D printed classic retrofit under dash vents. So between all of those things, I hope I have a really, really cool air conditioning system. Unfortunately, I can't test any of it because my battery was stone cold dead. I left something on, so my battery was totally dead. It's charging now, so I hope the alternator works. And then tomorrow morning, assuming it does, I'm gonna bang out a quick oil change for the car, get in some regular maintenance that I'll show you guys in the next video in terms of how to get your car prepared for a road trip, uh, change the oil, and then I will take it to the air conditioning place to get 23 ounces of whatever the hell they put in these things to make them cold. So thank you so much for watching. This is the two part series on upgrading the classic retrofit electric cooler. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to ask me any questions you want here in the comments, uh, like and subscribe and all the things. If you have any interest in this system and you should, because it really is a game changer for vintage Porsches, uh, drop me a line in the comments or reach out to Johnny at classicretrofit.com. We will see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.